for one in the run game, you know, you want have the opportunity to be a little bit more physical at the point of attack. Um, you know, that that added weight creates a, a lot more of a physical presence. But then I think also durability. You know, I think uh, you know last year was the first time that that he played a true. You know, 14 game season, which you know is a is a physical grind, and uh, you know having that weight and, and being able to 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 maintain that is going to be crucial for him to to be able to, to have a, another season like like he had and continue to grow and get better. Is your group maybe even deeper, and more versatile than last year? Maybe not as good at the very top as it was a season ago, but one to five maybe better. Well, I think our depth is better. You know, I think there's still a lot to be said about um, you know how everything's going to shake out in terms of of depth, but in terms of who's playing, you know, with which units. But um, I think the depth that we have is as good as we've ever had. Um, I'm really excited about the group. Um, I think there's going to be great competition within the room, and I think the collective of all the guys together, we're going to have an opportunity to be a really good defensive end unit. Tommy, one the guy you probably have to most figure out where he fits. A little bit. I mean, I think he has the most versatility in terms of having the ability to play inside and outside. Um, you know, so I think you know that's something we're going to work through and, and throughout the course of the spring. And you know, the goal always is to find a way up front to get your best four guys on the field. And then you know, same on, on the as you look at the defensive as a whole. You know, how do you get your best eleven out there? And you know, whatever you got to do, um, you know, in terms of rotation, structure, packaging, uh, but. We're gonna we're we got a lot of a lot of work to do to find out who who's gonna fit where, but um, I think we have a lot of good pieces in place. He, I, I haven't seen the updated numbers for him, but they had him listed at like 280, but he doesn't look like a guy that weighs 280 pounds. Yeah, you know he he, he slimmed down a little bit uh, through the course of. of uh, through the winter program, the tour of duty, but you know he's he's a big guy and he carries weight well, um, and he's moving well. So uh, he will have a little bit of probably versatility within where he plays and lines up based on down and distance and situation. Um, but time will tell. You know that there's there's a lot to be learned about you know all the all the new guys that are coming in, and we'll start finding that out tomorrow. He's a young guy just in yeah. general, right? Yeah, he's got I mean, he's got three years ahead of him. So um, you know he's he's got a he's He's got a long career, hopefully, uh, that we'll have the opportunity to see him grow and develop. When you guys were looking in the portal for solutions at defensive end, were you looking for different body types, different skill sets, versatility, or did just those guys made sense because they're good football players? Well, yeah, I think we were just looking for the best available players. And uh, each one of them, each one of those guys that, that we were able to get out of the transfer portal uh, kind of had a little bit different circumstances. You know, Marvin went in a little early. Um, you know, and, and we were able to jump on that, and we know we and we knew we wanted to add at least one more uh, defensive end before the end of the portal cycle. And having the opportunity to get both Tommy and uh, Sione was was awesome for for us, just because uh, you know the the you know our objective was to make sure we got at least one more guy, but to find two that we think are really good players. Uh, Sione being a little bit older. And then told me who has a couple more years ahead of him, I thought was really good for us. Sione just telling us his story, it was pretty remarkable. Can you can you sense that from him? Just what, what he's his life, his journey has gotten to this point? Well, you know, the thing about him is I think he's he has a different type of appreciation for every opportunity that he has. Um, every single day he shows up and works and that's got to be, in my opinion, a reflection of the fact that he doesn't take a whole lot for granted, that he's happy to be uh, in, in the situation that he's in, uh, and he's going to make the most of every day. And uh, he shows up with a, a smile on his face, a great attitude, and he's really a great person. And, uh, I'm excited that he's part of our room. I think he's going to be an impactful person, not only as a, as a player on the field, but just what he's going to be able to do within the room and with, with the guys. Is, is what you guys – are going to ask of Marvin much different from what he was doing at Georgia? Or? Uh, we're a little bit different schematically, uh, so it's going to be a little bit different. Um, you know, he'll he'll be a lot more hand in the dirt defensive end here, just because that's what we do a little bit less uh, in coverage. You sometimes played a little bit more of an outside linebacker uh, in, in his previous scheme, but um, you know, so so it'll be more fitting to what we do from a four down perspective um, but a lot of the things are, are going to have carryover and have some similarity 
Coach Norvell said, I think about a year ago, that, that depth is what wins championships on the defensive front. How did you obviously saw it play out last year winning the ACC title? And then you went about going about re reconfiguring that room with the new pieces, too. Sure. You know, I mean, you could see how it showed up. Obviously, a year ago, we, we needed the depth pieces, and we were probably a little bit deeper inside last year and a lot, a little, maybe a little thinner on the on the edges. Um, now I think we have really good depth at defensive end. Um, so I think there's a lot of different guys that can play different, different roles, and uh, I'm excited to watch them compete and, and see how it all plays out. We were talking about Patrick when I walked up. Like, for a guy that's had as much success as he's had, um, is it challenging to find things, ways to challenge him, or, or, or there's still plenty of things to do? No, I, you know, I think, uh, you know, when Pat's mentality is is not to be the the best defensive end at, at Florida State. I mean, his mentality is to be one of the best defensive ends in the country, and to do that, I think he understands what kind of commitment and focus that's going to take. And he's had two great guys that were kind of role models that, that go in front of him who are who have accomplished some of the things I know he wants to accomplish. You know, as a freshman, he's able to watch Jermaine. Um, you know, the last couple of years, he's been able to be with Jared, and both those guys are going to be in a position where I know Pat wants to go. And so I think he sees what it takes, uh, what he's going to have to get get done, and I think he's continuing looking for ways to get better as a player. Well, and uh, Coach Norvell talked about Jermaine and, and Jared both being back here this week, and that relationship, how special has that been for you, for for what it does for the younger guys to see those guys come back and how much they appreciate it? Well, you know, I mean, now that we're going into our fifth year, you do feel a little bit more of a sense of, of program, um, you know, for for, got, for your former players to come back and, and see some familiar faces. And, um, you know, obviously when you get when you first go to a place, you don't have any of that foundation there. Um, so to have guys that you coach that come around and, and, and want to invest in the, in the younger players, but also they've built a camaraderie, a camaraderie and a relationship that I think has, has been impressive to see and actually they were in my office earlier today and um, you know Jermaine was kind of teasing Jared about hey you're lucky that that I recruited you here and all you know all this stuff that but you know I do think both of their recruitments um, and the fact that they believed in what we we're trying to build here uh, were two really pivotal moments in this current staff's time at Florida State. You know, Jermaine came when we were coming off three wins off of COVID. Uh, Jared came when we were coming off five. Um, believing in the vi the vision of what we were trying to build, and then while he was here, we went 23 and three. And I think that was that was critical uh, in terms of what he was able to his legacy that he's able to leave and, and his impact on the program. With the younger. Um some of the younger defensive ends were kind of limited last year for different reasons. Like, how important is this spring going to be for you know, Hester and Lamont and all those guys? Uh, it's, it's a really critical spring for those two. And, you know, we were actually talking about it today as a staff. You know, that this is really the first time I'm going to have an opportunity to truly evaluate them in a in a, in a way that um, could you know, in terms of them playing. Um, you know, obviously when they're freshmen, you're, you're just trying to, to grow them and develop them a little bit. And then unfortunately, both of them had injuries that, that really kind of set them back in terms of last year. Uh, so this is this is going to be a, a critical spring because um, I do think they both have talent and ability uh, to just kind of see where that, where that goes from there. And then, you know, in terms of the, you talked about the versatility, is that coming to play in the spring at all in terms of like looking at guys at different spots or is that more of a, camp thing well, I think it's a, it's a combination I think you can get a feel for for how guys are going to be able to impact your team throughout the course of spring uh, we probably won't get into any you know, schematic specific packaging or anything like that until we get into fall camp and until we can kind of get through spring and be able to digest you know exactly what we think of each person because there are a lot of new faces at, at all three levels of the defense uh, there's a lot of talented guys but there's a lot of guys that, that we got to learn more about and uh, you know I think that's going to be one of the things that's exciting about the spring is is getting to know these guys and see how we can piece these 11 guys together to, to make the best defense we can it's kind of come to light since Braden had such a good combine and senior bowl like people are looking back at all the things you guys did with him and Jared and some of the games you guys are able to play up front how how much fun was that and and you guys will you have the pieces to do some of that yeah I mean I think so it took I mean it takes time you know you gotta you gotta 
get those guys, you know, coached up and, and, and jailed together and, and kind of have that ability to play off each other. And I think that's one of the reasons you saw the defense get better, I think, as the year went on, um, was that, that, you know, guys really started to become comfortable with their role and with playing with each other. And, and uh, that's one of the goals of this spring is to start that over. And, uh, you know, the guys that are, are coming back, build upon what they've been able to, to accomplish, and then the guys that are new really get them acclimated into what we're trying to do.